What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. This is like the first video I'm shooting since all of the SEMA stuff. SEMA jacked me up pretty good towards the end. Completely lost my voice, um, which is kind of important for this whole YouTube thing. So I haven't filmed in like a couple of weeks, uh, which is crazy to me. Oh, <clears throat> we got Papa Rano on the old F600, getting this thing fired up. We're gonna be doing some work today around the ranch. Uh, a couple weeks of alpha here and not doing any work really uh, set us behind. You can see behind me, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but we got some weather incoming. And as you guys know, uh, the ranch is kind of notorious. Sorry, I got a little booger action going on right there. The ranch is kind of notorious for having issues with rain. And we've been doing great over the last like year of getting a lot of those fixed, but there's one major one that has been bugging the crap out of me. And today we are addressing that. Uh, we've got all the animals coming over this morning to say hi. What's up, Willie? Oh, uh, yep, and then these donkeys chase you off. Yep, hello, good morning, hello, good morning. Good to see you guys. It's much more fun to own you guys when you stay on this side of the fence and not trash the house. So, appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys. Hello, hello, good to see you, good to see you. We've got the goats over there. Bubs is kind of apprehensive right now. For some reason, he doesn't want to walk over. Baby goat right there. And then Big Walt, Big Walt's floating around here somewhere. So, we're going to be working the F600 pretty hard today. We've got a lot of concrete we gotta move, a lot of dirt we gotta move. Using the Mini X, we're gonna be borrowing James's 299 for a little bit. We did some cool stuff at James's house yesterday, so if you guys wanna uh, see what was going on over there, follow Get Muddy on YouTube. All right. Did you bring us an opener? Yep. What the heck happened to my air conditioner? Jeez. Still needs a little warming up. So, without showing too much, uh, we're over at James's. He's gracious enough to let me use the 299 to uh, take a bunch of concrete from his property and uh, we're going to be throwing it in that ditch. It seemed to work out well when I brought a bunch of uh, broken concrete out here before. Uh, I'll show you guys that in a second. James is doing some pretty cool stuff out here. Let's see, let's see. I don't know what he's shown on YouTube yet by the time this video goes live. Look, we got a little solar panel right there. We were using that big old girl to do some digging. It's definitely got me wanting to do a bunch more stuff around the ranch like ASAP. Uh, that's for sure. However, as you guys know, if you guys have done any type of work, anything on like ranch scale is ungodly expensive. All in due time, guys. All in due time. So we'll get the 299 fired up. Is another purchase uh, I'll be making at some point. Maybe not quite a 299 because I think brand new these things are almost 120 now. Something like that. Papa Rana right there. Look at that old F600 go. She just looks right on a ranch, you know? Like it's just, it's meant to be. All right, we've arrived at James's broken concrete pile. Now obviously we don't want anything too, too big, but I think, uh, I think it's a good mix right here. He also said we could take all that crushed concrete if we would like. Uh, he's got his pretty sweet crusher right there. How he has the patience to sit here and crush concrete all day long, I don't know, but uh, I'm glad he does. Hopefully the GoPro's not too bouncy, I'm just holding it in between my legs. Alrighty, now I'm not sure how much to put in. The PTO on this thing has not failed us yet in terms of being able to lift, but uh, obviously concrete is more dense and heavy than anything we really do put in here. So we're gonna give this a shot. It's like five or six bucket loads. And uh, let's just see you know, how far that gets us. I also don't wanna super overload this and then we're dropping concrete going down the road. We also don't have the best tires on this thing. I think the main guy is that guy that moved out. Dump right here. Dump right here? Oh yeah, you're right there. Look at that, guys. Oh yeah, she can handle this. You're gonna go right in the hole. Look at stuff you get. It's the old truck. No bargain break, so go. It's all you. Now again, if you guys have been following along with the channel, you guys know like my biggest issue with water is the front of the property. And it used to be right up there. And we've got that pretty well figured out. Unfortunately, we've been, you know, we tied in our big, I think we did a 10 inch culvert pipe, uh, but it tied into the existing like 
six inch culvert pipe that is filled with God knows what over the last however many years that has existed. And that pipe runs right up underneath the old entrance in the old driveway. So what we did is we ran a big one right here, tied into the little one just because we weren't ready to tear this driveway up yet. And then, well, it's a little bit kind of filled in with some sticks and stuff, but you can see my rock dam has actually had made that survive. So you can see the little opening right there, which has been actually enough to uh, keep this from washing out too bad. A little bit over tops, but it hasn't been too, too bad. Now the issue is though, when that over tops, uh, along with all the other water coming on the road. So if we take a little look down the road right now, you can see that the road has a little bit of a center swell, but the majority of the road kind of pitches towards my property, which is that way. So number one, when that overtops and you get a bunch of water that comes through here, it ruts out in front of what is going to be the new entrance. And that kind of gets a little gnarly right here. Every once in a while, I fill that in with some dirt when I have some spare dirt and some time. But then coming down here, you can see it actually undermines where we just put this little bit of a swale in right here. We had a little bit of extra concrete when we were doing the first pour of the driveway. So we just kind of concreted it around uh this 10 inch culvert pipe which you know this thing's been a godsend but again you can see when the water comes from this way starts to even undermine that and uh it's not the end of the world but that looks horrible then as we go down the road it gets worse and worse and worse uh you can see this big grand canyon that kind of opens up and it might not look that bad on camera but if i jump down in here we are like a solid three feet below the roadside and at some point even further down the road I mean, this is a long stretch i don't even know calculation wise we're probably six to eight hundred feet or so uh i mean look at this section right here this section is just massive now if i remember correctly when i bought this place then none of this existed right this was like smooth all the way over and then you had my hillside to my fence but as this is like slowly worn away uh it's cool though because it exposes some really cool stuff like look at this sweet like vein of rock it almost looks like a, like a spine of an animal we got two of them right here and this stuff is super super hard look at this that's that's the dirt we're we're working with out here so basically this giant canyon just keeps opening up and I've thrown some rocks in here from time to time to try to slow the water down. You can see it's only doing so much. Let's come down here. What we find right here? We've got us an old, an old glass bottle. Look at that. We're definitely unearthing some cool stuff. That's a, that's an old one right there. No labeling, no marking. Don't know if that one's worth anything with that little chip missing out of it. Oh 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 oh! We got another one right here. Let's see. Oh oh jeez. Oh jeez. Oh, that one's, that one's a little buried. Ugh. That might not be a full bottle anymore. Nope. Nope, that's, that's not quite a full bottle. But one of the reasons I bought my mower attachment for my Mini X is because I still have to mow this, and when there's a Grand Canyon in the way, I can't really just cross it with like a standard brush hog and get up there and mow it. So the having the arm on the Mini X has been great for mowing this, but I'm kind of over that. I want to be able just to like get over to that side. So a while back, I brought in a bunch of stuff like this bunch of concrete, broken asphalt and stuff that I took off of job sites. And this area used to be really bad. I mean, it used to come out into the road and it was slowly starting to grow to where eventually we are gonna have, like we weren't gonna be able to pass the road. And I'm happy to say, seems like this is working great. It's actually catching a lot of the sediment and filling itself back in. Like this didn't look like this when I left it. It was just all voids, look at this. Look at all the sediment that kind of caught here, and this actually filled itself back up. So my plan is, we're going to take a bunch of broken concrete from James's. We're going to fill it in just below the road surface, because I don't want to see it like this. I'd rather we not see a bunch of broken concrete and stuff sticking up. It just looks a little tacky. So we're going to fill it below the road surface, and then we're going to come in with a nice layer of dirt. Will it get washed away? Probably. Will it fill back up with sediment? Seeing that? Maybe. My goal is, this Grand Canyon goes away, and we're able to like travel back and forth across here. Look at this guy. I'm, I've never, I have not walked out here since we did this and it's rained, but look at this. This filled all back up because of the dam of all of this uh, asphalt and concrete that I put right here. And there's another spot that we did right here. Again, this was like starting to really work its way out into the road to where this got really, really narrow and it was making it hard for people to pass. We're gonna have Papa Rhino running uh, the skid steer and loading the dump truck. Hopefully that goes flawlessly. Nothing gets broken. I'm gonna go grab the Mini X so I can actually like place these uh, pieces of concrete and stuff. Make sure everything's nice and below the surface. We could come back later with the skid steer and do it, but I feel like I'm more precise 
uh, with the Maniacs and the thumb attachment. So here's to another fun, productive day working at the ranch. Kind of miss that stuff. Oh, now we got the goats coming to say hi. What's up, y'all? So one of the cool things about the gate that we installed, having uh, like the, I don't remember what they called it, the B option on the remote is that if the animals are nearby, you don't have to open the gate all the way. You just pop it open enough just to walk through. What's up, y'all? Good to see you, good to see you. So we'll hit the B option on the gate. And watch this, watch this, there we go. That's all it opens. After a long hike, we've made it to the mini -X. I swear, if like one wheels or something were smaller and more compact and I could throw them in the tractors with me easier, I'd have a one wheel out here just for getting around. Now today we have rain in the forecast, which is good. We want rain if we're gonna be moving dirt and stuff. Uh, eliminates from us having to wet the dirt up because nature does it naturally and wet dirt compacts a little bit better than this really dry stuff that we have. I was hoping it was gonna hold off for a couple of hours. So let us get all the concrete in and then as we start moving the dirt, if it starts to kind of sprinkle or rain then, we'd be good. But you can probably see on the windshield here, we've got some pretty big drops of rain starting to come down. Thankfully we got enclosed calves because it's not gonna stop us. Now, of course, because the camera's on, you're probably not gonna see it, but there's a bunch of lightning that just came out across the hillside over there, so. We've got two loads over here already of broken concrete. I think this is actually gonna get us pretty far. I think about right there is where I wanna be in terms of like how high we wanna be again below the road so we can kind of fill it with some dirt on top. All right, that was a horrible grab, horrible grab. I also don't want it too high because if we ever come through here and we're mowing, definitely don't want to catch the uh, corner of one of these pieces of concrete sticking up. That won't be a good day. So guys, I don't think we're gonna last very long. The winds are coming. It looks like it's raining right there. Again, good thing we got enclosed calves. I don't mind working in the rain. Ooh, the wind is kicking up. I don't mind working in the wind and the Whew. Okay, hold on. Jeez, look at it. We got a dang old tornado. Come on, door. Woo! Alright. <laughs> look at that guys. It is a dang tornado. Wow. That that storm just came in kind of quick. Well, Papa Rhino is not going to be happy. Oh, oh, and a big old flash of lightning. Hopefully you guys saw that. Uh, okay, well, hey, things are, jeez, things are getting interesting out here, ladies and gentlemen. Look like we're in a twister. Look at all the leaves. Jeez, it's whipping up over here. So I don't mind working in conditions like this. Papa Rhino, though, I don't know if he's going to be so stoked to, uh, to be out here. He's not happy when he sees lightning. He's probably the smart one in this situation. 
So yeah, I think uh, today is also a good day to recommend. If you ever buy a piece of equipment, get an enclosed cab. I'm not having to put on a rain jacket to uh, you know continue working. I'm actually a little a little warm in here. I could probably turn the AC on. Now, I didn't think we'd be testing this quite so soon, but based on the amount of rain everybody's been calling me and telling me about in town, uh, we're going to be testing this today as well. Oh, it is a cold rain too. The wind is not helping. It is crazy how much quieter that truck is now that she's running right. He's loading it heavy too, and uh, I gotta say, the PTO has no issues. We're not giving it any throttle at all and the PTO is uh, dumping no problem. Now the only issue is we don't have a passenger side mirror, so you cannot see crap uh, when it comes to backing up to this ditch. We should honestly probably be turning around and then backing up to the ditch, but uh, that's no fun. We like the risk of falling in the ditch all the time. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Right there, it's good. Dump it. What? Yeah, I was in it, my doors were open. That one. Love that old truck. That thing is so sick. All right, let's get back in the cab. At least we got rubber tracks on the ground. I don't know if that's gonna do anything. Keep us from getting uh, electrocuted nearby. I think this is load number four, five? Maybe load number five? I feel like the turnaround time's gotten a little bit slower. I'm not sure what's going on over at James's house. In between loads from Papa Rhino, I've been running down to where I showed you guys earlier that we had dumped uh, a bunch of stuff in the past. And back then, I didn't bring the Mini X down. We just used, uh, I think we used James' skip loader to kind of push it around. So it was all very high. Uh, so I've been actually knocking those piles down and spreading them out, and we're getting some pretty good coverage. So after this load, who we're a little bit at an angle there, and we'll be all right. But you can see we've already done probably a hundred or so feet and then this one will spread us out really the like deepest part that we have to worry about is right here once we get past that it's pretty shallow so we'll be able to spread out like a load will go a lot further i don't think we have that many more loads to go and then we can start bringing dirt uh let's see what time is it uh it's almost noon so we're actually doing pretty decent as long as the weather holds up the storm's kind of we're just sprinkling right now uh if this holds up hoping we can knock a majority of this out today. It's already looking better and cleaner because a lot of this brush is kind of getting knocked in uh, when I am uh, moving this stuff around, but yeah, it's looking good, guys. Nice and wide the road looks now. All right, y'all, quick stop for some fuel with this good old horrible California-approved gas can. Whatever the heck this stupid thing works. There it is. Oh, maybe, kind of, yep. Probably be easier just to. That's all she wrote. Three hours later, spilled more than anything. Got a little California compliant there. All right, back to work. Ain't nothing else for me to do over here. That's a pretty heavy load.
So our good neighbor Earl, the one that actually got this thing like running in tip top shape, just ran over and he made us a quick little mirror set up there. Just off of a couple little things he had lying around. And believe it or not, that is a million times better than what we had. All right, so we'll get backed up now. There's no power steering thing is no fun. Hold on. We gotta set the camera down for this one. I think this area is definitely one of the biggest. I mean, that whole load, if I would actually got it in the hole, would have like just filled this without having to spread it out. So we probably have six or more of those that we would need here, maybe maybe 10. And I think we're good. Flash, I'm hoping, because this is the longest part. Once we start doing the dirt, well, I guess the dirt's probably not quicker because we're actually digging dirt out of the ground with the Mini X um, versus having loose material, which loose material, obviously you can load a little bit quicker. But let me tell y'all, we have come a long ways from not having ways to bulk move materials out here. Uh, yeah, the early days of the ranch where all I had was the Mini X that we're sitting in. And if I needed to fill this in, sometimes I would like just dig off of this hillside a little bit just to kind of fill in here because I had no way to move materials in like bulk quantities. Not really sure what happened, uh, but apparently Paparano decided this time we're just dumping it in the middle of the road. Interesting take here. It's a big take here. I don't really like this move. Everything was working. I don't, don't know why we decided that was the move. Okay, well, maybe he wanted to keep me busy while he's uh, going and making runs. Not really sure, guys. You know, what's funny is I was about to jump in on this trip and uh, just run a bunch of loads of this stuff and just make a bunch of like piles half in the ditch, half not, and then come back later with the Mini X. So I feel like my cycle times are a little faster than uh, Paparano running loads, but I'm, I'm not really sure what happened here. Now I kind of have to get it out of the road. I'm assuming he thinks this is faster than backing up or he doesn't like to back up or... Yeah. Don't really know, guys. Don't really know. Yeah, guys, I guess uh, this is just our new thing. We're just, we're just tumping it in the road. Albeit it does keep me a little busier while waiting. We're almost past the biggest part of the goalie that needs to get filled in. I'm ready to switch to dirt. Okay guys, in the essence of making some progress today and kind of like seeing how my idea is going to work, um, we're pretty much going to call it quits here for bringing concrete over. We've gotten a solid 150 feet or so. This is where uh, a lot of the old stuff is. You can see we're probably only about six inches deep right there. So I don't really want to put concrete in there. I have to put really small pieces and then hope that they don't stick up by the time we go and put dirt. So that'll probably just end up being dirt and uh, we'll just call it good at that. But speaking of dirt, now we're going to switch over to dirt. Uh, we're really good in here. I mean, this actually doesn't look too bad. If this was a straight line and not all jagged, uh, I wouldn't mind leaving the concrete here. Uh, it almost looks like you put riprap down. You know, if you guys have ever seen leaving job sites, they have those like five inch pieces of uh, rock. That's riprap. So it doesn't look horrible. I'm gonna go get staged to start digging out some dirt. And we're gonna see. I'm gonna start with the Mini X if it's too slow. I might go grab James's 299. Uh, he has a smooth bucket on it though, so it's not quite ideal. Look at that though, guys. We are looking good. All nice and filled in. But there is a chance that, you know, all the dirt that we put on top is gonna wash away. The good news is though, this concrete's never gonna wash away. And hopefully, if the dirt does wash away, the silt that's gonna come after it from the rain pushing all the silt off the mountains fills it back up. Yeah, will it exactly work like that? I'm not sure. We're just trying it out, you know? And if money was no object and it wasn't a million dollars to get concrete out here, I would actually concrete a drainage swell on top of this all the way down that the water could go into. And then we would never have erosion issues again. So welcome to Rhino Ranch Quarry. This is, uh, I don't really know why this is the spot I just started digging dirt out of for stuff, but it is really close to the front entrance. Oh, it, uh, you know, just quicker to take dirt out front. But again, the dirt is super hard in here. And for all of you that say we should dig a pond out here, here's why I can't dig one without a pond liner. This is pretty below grade right here. You know, it just rained. You can see there's water right here because it just rained pretty hard for, you know, 
10, 20 minutes, and uh, the water just goes right into the ground, like very, very quickly. I would love a pond. We'll probably end up at some point digging a pond, but we're gonna need a big old pond liner because the dirt out here will just soak it right on up. You're gonna see in a second here just how hard this stuff is. I don't know if we're gonna be loading very quickly. Alrighty. There goes nothing. Slow and steady. Oh, Dustin Paparano out. You know, even with a bigger bucket, this machine's just not powerful enough to get through the super hard stuff, so it's honestly better that we have a smaller bucket. It's more PSI to kind of break through the harder stuff. However, it's very slow when it comes to transferring bulk material like we're doing. I think after this load, I'll bring the skid steer over here and see if it'll do this quicker. So I didn't uh, actually time how long this took, but it took a significant amount of time to get a full load here. So we're gonna dump this, run over to James's, grab the 299, we'll see if she'll be able to break through. I mean, if there's any skid steer that has a chance, it's the heaviness of a 299 to break through this, but don't know, it's some solid stuff. First load of dirt going on the road, so basically, in the essence of speeding things up, we're just going to make a bunch of trips with the dirt, put piles of it all down the road, and then I will come back later with either the skid steer or the coyote tractor, get a little, little sand blasted, and uh, spread it out. It's a lot easier to work with when you have a bunch of material already staged. Guys, well, it just so happens, as we were about to go get the 299, James was coming home, so he is gracious enough to help us. He's actually in the 299 right now, on the road, kind of spreading out the tiles that we have already laid down. Papa Rhino is in the Mini X right now. I just had to go do a little quick battery change for the GoPro. I guess we'll switch over now. I'll start hauling some loads in the F600. I will say, as much as I love this truck, I feel like there is a uh, little bit of a fuel leak inside the cab, or at least like it vents into the cab because it is just raw gasoline that uh, starts to get to you after a while. I'm sitting in this thing. Some hard dirt. <laughs> yeah, you guys can see even the weight of the 299, which is, again, on the bigger side of skid steers. A little bit of a struggle to break through. With a tooth bucket, it'd probably be no issue. I gotta say guys, uh, Skid Steer makes pretty quick work of moving piles of dirt. See James over there knocking down that pile already that we just put out. Again, remember we're keeping the slope that away so the water can still kind of stay in that area as opposed to going out in the road and creating a bunch of big old ruts out in the middle of the road. I'd rather it keep rutting where we're at. Now I was sitting here in the F600, you know, being a good truck driver and not getting out of the truck. And I was like, man, I don't know who thought it was a good idea to put the CV radio little latch right there for the handheld mic. Like, why would you do that? Put in the center of like a perfectly good, you know, gauge cluster. And then I realized they were actually a lot smarter than I thought. Looks like they used one of the existing, now I probably would have done it over here, but one of the existing screws uh, from this little bezel. So instead of doing like what every kid probably did back in the day and like blasted holes into your dash, they didn't put any new holes in the dash. Uh, kudos actually to that person. I'll be it again. I probably would have put it over here somewhere instead of right, right in the in the center with this giant wheel. It's not, not the most convenient place to grab. Right there would be nice. You know, you got your shifter. You grab your CB mic. All right, now we got us a little system. Let's see, we got excavator and skid steer, load and dump truck.
give credit. I come from a farming family, but to the farmers that used to run these things day in and day out, uh, I, you know, it beats a horse in a wagon, it beats a shovel and a wheelbarrow, but uh, it's not the most comfortable ride in the world. These things, are, you know, it's, it's work to drive these things. Uh, they will beat you up. All right, so uh, show you guys, you know, I pride myself on pretty much being able to drive anything. You know, I feel like I'm an okay driver when it comes to a lot of things, but this one is a workout. So just talk to the neighbor. He says it seems like the, the clutch needs adjusting now, but you can see clutches all the way in. Uh, and we, we still don't really want to go into gear. So getting her in a second, you just kind of got to, you got to muscle her in. And then obviously with no power steering, she's a, she's an interesting one to drive. Now, all that's fine and dandy, right? The truck will move, goes forward. The one thing that's still pretty sketchy on this truck is the brakes. So the fronts have been adjusted, they're all dialed in. The rears have not. Uh, and sometimes you go to stop, you'll probably see when I pull up right now to pop a rhino up on his pile. Uh, you gotta you gotta pump these things a couple of times and like the first or second pump you have nothing and then all of a sudden they just grab. So like I said, it's a little bit of a workout driving these old trucks, especially when the they're not quite functioning perfectly. And again, hopefully this view is wide enough that you guys can actually see it, but it's also a tight squeeze, squeezing in between these fence posts. I can definitely see how they stayed warm though back in the day. It is a workout. And remember, GoPros smooth and stuff, so it don't look nowhere near as bouncy on camera as it is in person. Let's see how we're looking on brakes. Let's see, coming down the hill a little bit. We've got no brakes. No brakes and second stop, and we got brakes. <laughs> I should have clutched it there. I didn't think they'd grab that hard. Now we also don't have a parking brake, so we always gotta leave it in gear, shut it off, you know, that, that holds us. That's our parking brake. I think it's safe to assume this will probably be our last load. Uh, whoever, you know, decided we should roll our clocks back and lose daylight, that should be abolished forever. And I believe California actually voted on it to abolish it forever, but for some reason, never went into effect. For everybody that says you can't complain if you don't vote, votes don't really matter these days. And I will say, as hokey as those two little mirrors are right there, those things are great. That is like going from having nothing on that side of the truck to having those two little boogers, amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, James says we're good. Here we go. This turns fun. How we have not hit that post right there, I'm not sure, and again, I'm sure it's not gonna look as gnarly in person as it does, but you got no power steering, going uphill, I'm squeezing in, and we don't wanna hit that post right there. You can see in the mirror, it gets a little close, but we got her, we got her. I don't know what just fell. Water bottle, something, camera, phone, don't know. We got the headlights on on this thing, does that work? Oh, there we go, look at that. We even got us a little, little light right there. Oh, don't need the turn signals. Good to know those work, though. We're gonna come on down, we are looking good. Oh, we're falling in. We're falling in, I got a little, a little too far to the side. All right, we got out though, we got out. Now, clutch it. And again, with a not quite adjusted clutch, the uh, PTO doesn't quite go in as nice as she should. PTO out. Put her in neutral. A little left foot on the brake, a little right foot for a little throttle. And we'll get this last load dumped. Clutch back in, put the bed down, disengage the PTO, and come on, girl. Ugh, get in a second. There we go. Oh, don't go in the ditch. Don't go in the ditch. Look at that. Woo we just skated that ditch. Do a little turn around on the neighbor's driveway. Ooh. Let's see. She gonna go in a second? Ugh, there we go. Power steering would be nice. Oh, well, maybe we didn't get that far with that load. All right, maybe one more load. One more load. Let's see if everybody's up for it. All right, this is our last load. This should get us to completely cover everything that we put down today. Uh, let's see, I think when we started, our pit was like here. So we've taken out a substantial amount of dirt right there as well. Uh, a lot more dirt, honestly, than I thought. I figured we filled up most of that goalie with all of that broken concrete that it wasn't actually gonna end up being that much dirt. Uh, but I was wrong. We are eating up a ton of dirt. But again, you can see behind us, we are losing daylight pretty quickly. So this is, uh, this is it, and then I'll go show you guys how the road's looking, but 
pretty sick. Now, I don't know exactly, you know, the tonnage of the, the loads that we've been moving in the old F600 today, but she's pretty impressive for being a 63-year-old truck. Still running and does not struggle at all with the weight that we're putting into it. All righty, last load, last load. Look at that, y'all. Look how, shoot, the road was to, uh, we can see the line right where uh, James is. The road was to about here. <laughs> Before all that got filled in. Number one, we got a really nice wide road. Ooh, got a little, a little dust on the camera there. But number two, we can now get to this hillside and this embankment to actually address it and mow it if need be, instead of having to uh, reach over that ditch with the Mini X. Now I can actually get up to the top with the Mini X and the brush cutter if I wanted to. I actually have uh, my eyes on, I'm waiting for it to come into stock, uh, a new piece of equipment for the actual Coyote tractor that should make life a lot easier when it comes to um, not only mowing all the acreage, but doing all this detailed mowing as well, or brush cutting, whatever you want to call it out here, because it ain't exactly grass. James making quick work in the 299, getting this all nice and dialed in. I think this is gonna work out beautifully. You know, we still retained our slope that way. Again, is it gonna get rutted out at some point again? Yes. Uh, hopefully it never gets as bad as it did because of all the concrete that we put up underneath it. And maybe we just gotta sprinkle some dirt on it, you know, once or twice a year, if that, hopefully not that much, because you guys can see it's quite the operation. Uh, there was two of us for almost a full day and then James coming in clutch at the end here really helped speed this process up. But, Move material is just like, that's what kills you out here. It's just bringing material from one spot to another. It's just so dang time consuming. I feel like we need to get James some rigid lights for his uh, 299 there. What do you guys think? Those stock halogens, that's just, this is not cut. But I think some nice LED lights on this thing. I think I got some rigids lying around the shop. Maybe some dial dynamics uh, would, be, would be pretty cool. So what do you, I mean, she's no super 10, but what do you think about the old F600? You know, I was fairly impressed actually. <laughs> There was one time you were dumping though, I did a little bit of this, I was like, Ooh. I felt that. Yeah. I, I, I was getting close to the edge. Yeah, makes you pucker, man. <laughs> All righty, we got Papa Rhino heading out. Clearly the darkness is coming quick. Now I can't see at all where I'm going. The windshield wipers aren't the greatest, but check us out. I just kind of bumped the switch and look at that. It's even got lights on in this thing, on the dash. Now that's pretty sweet. 60 something year old truck. They work too. That's impressive. Check that out, y'all. The cab light even works. I've never really messed with the light switches on this thing. Well, guys, didn't take but about 30 minutes of going inside, and it started pouring pretty heavily. And you can see here, let's see, we've got some water trickling through. Most of it's actually coming around, so we definitely should have cleaned out that culvert today. Uh, once it gets around here, though, it is going to start to pool up there. That's where we filled all in. You can see going down the center of the road, there is water that also kind of goes down that way. And uh, eventually it finds its way to this side. But uh, we'll know by morning, because this is kind of where we stopped filling in. Again, we can only come up so high because of that concrete that we had poured right there to about there. Uh, so eventually this will build up and hopefully just keeps a nice, a nice little trough along the edge there instead of that big cavern. So we shall see. Uh, it was a decent amount of work today to do what we did. Uh, might not look like much on camera, but take some time so with that we're gonna wrap up i'm getting soaked as always thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed already please give the subscribe button now that you never miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like you a thumbs up don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you got to be willing to work for it you guys are the best i'm out damn uh. yeah uh. yeah uh.